Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us on the program today. I'd like to welcome Dr. Mark Sherwood to the program, CEO of the Functional Medical Institute and also the author of the Amazon bestseller, The Quest for Wellness. He's in studio today to talk with us about managing hormones through our lifestyle. Welcome to the program, Mark. Neil, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you a lot for returning. You know, when we were here before, we talked about um, some of the best practices for maintaining healthy weight loss once the weight is gone. We also talked in other segments about uh, a certain diet known as the ketogenic diet. You're here with us today to talk about hormone management, not so much through supplementation, even though that is a possibility, but more through lifestyle. That's right. Uh, many times uh, as we age, we don't like to hear this, but the hormones get a little bit cranky, mm -hmm. fickle, and more or less all messed up. And hormones, we should know, are simply messengers. And a messenger that is not delivering a message that is complete, clear, or even timely mm -hmm. is certainly problematic. Some of the most common hormones we hear talked about today uh, certainly are the, the sex hormones like the, the testosterone, the estrogen, even the progesterone. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also some that are super critical to understanding, and those would be the following three, cortisol, insulin, and something called leptin, L-E-P-T-I-N. Mm -hmm. When you look at all these hormones together in a big matrix, we can begin to understand that there is more than just putting a hormone on board because a level is low or even cutting some back because it's high. Everything works together synergistically. And I failed to mention the thyroid hormones. They're mm. super critical to metabolism, the heart, uh, the way we maintain body fat or not, uh, hair loss or not, uh, the way we uh, manage our temperature, whether we're cold all the time or hot all the time. All of these things matter. Do these things, uh, obviously they matter throughout our life, but are there periods in our life when some of these hormones matter a great deal less or more than others as we, uh, as we age? Uh, and can we substitute some of these hormones um, because our bodies aren't naturally producing that amount anymore? Is that something that we can do and can we do it through diet? You know, nutrition is probably the best way and it's probably the number one thing that we do at our clinic here at the Functional Medical Institute as a precursor to even putting any sort of uh, hormone therapy on board because it's almost like a fertile ground. You have to till up the ground, uh, put some fertilizer in it, get it ready to grow, and get these hormones ready to get on board. So when we do something such as you stated to uh, get a person in this fertile ground area, we'll put them on a... Uh, kind of a ketogenic anti-inflammatory food protocol. And we see many, many times, and I saw this just recently, that a gentleman came in here, his testosterone level, normal ranges are between, depending on what lab, 200 and 1200 or 200 and 1100. I saw his testosterone go from 250 to 480 in a three-month period just by getting his nutrition in line. And this wasn't an older gentleman. He was in his early 40s. And he was tired and fatigued all the time. And we know that when men come in, the andropausal age, yes, men have that symptom as well. They're going to be tired and beat down. And many times testosterone will begin to be declining their life. And when you put replacement therapy on board, the body over time will eventually shut its own production down depending instead on the exogenous hormone coming in. And when we're talking about women, the same is true. They come in, their progesterone goes down, their testosterone is down, their estrogen begins to come up, and they get a lot of weight gain, a lot of fatigue, uh, even hair loss, moodiness, etc. And all these things can be aligned better and modified or optimized better by fixing the nutritional uh, regimen they're, they're taking in, and we see... Many times in that example, uh, testosterone will come up a little bit, estrogen will be normalized, and many times uh, my wonderful wife, Dr. Michelle, will uh, prescribe some progesterone to help them rest and sleep better so that they won't have uh, excess fatigue buildup, which affects another hormone that we mentioned earlier, 
cortisol. Yeah. Are any of these tips and methods available online for our listeners? They are on our website at www.fmidr.com. There are numerous articles, blogs, videos that talk about the interrelationship of all of these hormone pathways. And interestingly enough, Neil, and this is a fascinating relationship that everybody will be able to really grasp today, mm -hmm. if I might, is this. Um, when a person is eating poorly, we know that that's going to cause excess yellow fat gain. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody likes that. Everybody wants to get that off. We talked about dieting or weight loss or body composition tips in the past. But when yellow fat is on board like that, it's very inflammatory. And it's also very stressful. Absolutely. So we see in the stress of the matter, cortisol comes up. So as cortisol comes up abnormally high for an abnormal por portion of the day, we know that cortisol put is, is indicative of our body being in the fight-or-flight mode. When we're in the fight-or-flight mode, we see adrenaline come up as well. Mm -hmm. But the body will produce its own blood sugar, its own blood sugar, which forces the pancreas to secrete insulin to deal with blood sugar. Well, here's the problem. When insulin is chronically elevated because of chronic cortisol elevation, okay. we're in a chronic fat storage mode. You cannot lose body fat because you're chronically storing it. The body is trying to hang on to what it's got. Huh. The more fat we have, fat begins to secrete that hormone leptin. And leptin is supposed to go to our brain and tell us that, you know what? We have enough fuel. We don't need any more. In other words, we have enough fat in our body to be used as fuel. But when the body is inundated with too much leptin, the brain becomes leptin resistant. Oh. And it doesn't hear the signal anymore. And instead of hearing, I've got enough fuel, it doesn't hear anything. And that interprets or makes the brain interpret that I have I need... no fuel. Yeah. Okay. And so the brain will talk to the thyroid through the pituitary and say, thyroid, you need to lower yourself down because we need to hang on to some fuel. Mm. Okay. So, so yeah, it all comes that, together. Yeah. Yeah, it does. And the interrelationship there is fascinating. And if people can get a hold of the nutritional piece, they can begin to regulate their hormones much longer in life and allow them to be optimized much longer in life before the need for hormone replacement or hormone supplementation comes in. Now, you're the author of, of, of Amazon bestseller, The Quest for Wellness, with um, all of the information uh, available for uh, folks at the Functional Medical Institute there in, uh, in Tulsa and with just uh, an abundance of information, blogs and everything else on the website. Why did you write the book, The Quest for Wellness? Uh, we, we saw a need for it. I mean, mm -hmm. people are dying one plate at a time and one person at a time across this country. And mm -hmm. we wanted to give people these principles that are easy to follow for everybody. There is um, a plan in there, no matter where a person is on this journey of wellness, to get better, to optimize hormones, nutrition, life, etc. The plan is broken down into four steps, physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual, so that a person can grow every day in all those areas simultaneously. You can't separate those. If you do, one is going to be left out or neglected. So the idea being to give people a practical, doable, sustainable plan to improve in all areas of life for the rest of their life. Now, how easy uh, are these principles to pass on uh, to our kids once we get an understanding of uh, ketogenics and uh, other hormone management strategies that you offer there at the Functional Medical Institute? Very simple. Uh, when parents will get on board, and we have parents and families that come in here, when they live this thing out and it becomes a culture in their home, they not only change their kids because the kids are going to do what the parents did. I mean, that's a powerful truth. They're going to do what they saw. And I encourage all parents to grasp this thing and begin to feed their kids high-quality protein, vegetables, good fats, and watch them grow up and be sick less. Watch them have better grades. Watch them be able to perform better. And watch them not have to struggle with excess fat tissue because they don't have this massive exposure to these processed inflammatory foods. Great. It's been a pleasure having you in the studio today with us, Mark. Neil, thank you again for having me. I certainly appreciate it as always.
You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in studio with Dr. Mark Sherwood, discussing hormone management through lifestyle. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.